What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. And today we are going to install the 14.4 inch Android display into my 2019 F-150 Raptor. So this tutorial, if you're following along, is going to actually benefit you if you do have a 2015 to 2021 F-150. There's a lot of people saying that there's other Tesla style displays that are just absolute junk. This one does retain your sync system. The reason why it does is it doesn't come with sync like built into it. But what you'll do is you'll take the module out of your vehicle and swap your sync module to this display and then it's able to communicate back and forth. You're also going to get wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. So that's a plus, plus all the apps that you get from the Android app stores. This thing's just an absolute beast and uh, I'm very intrigued on installing it. But I'm going to help you guys out. You could purchase one here in the States, but it's going to cost you over $1,000. I purchased this one from AliExpress. I paid just under $700 shipped for this. So what you're gonna wanna do is, I'm even gonna give you guys the links and show you what I did to find this item. So just head on over to your web browser, type in AliExpress, and if you do, do .com, it's gonna automatically switch you over to .us. All you have to do is type in a search for Android 14 for F-150 and you could do 2015 because it's this installs for a 2015 to 2021 search and here we go so we have several basically what I did is I kind of went through because sometimes these are a little misleading like you're gonna see the 712 you're gonna see the 609 the 833 like say for instance we open this one up and you're gonna see right away this item is a 32 gigabyte 12.3 inch display well you don't want the 12.3 inch display so you switch through them 32 gigabyte for the 14.5 so this display that i purchased they some people call it a 14.4 and then some people call it a 14.5 go through here's the 64 gigabyte version 14.5 and then you're gonna have the 128 gigabyte 14.5 so i have the 128 gigabyte 14.5 but i did not pay 821 dollars for it Go through that switches you over to a 64 gigabyte 12.3 inch screen and as you can see the 12.3 inch screen is just not as nice I just went with the 128 gigabyte because I'm kind of future proofing myself when you switch from a 64 gig to the 128 the price difference is you might as well just switch to the 128 gigabyte version so now we're gonna go back and this one for instance we'll just open this up same thing, 32 gigabyte. Now this person here is only selling three displays, which they're all the 14.5. So you switch to the 64 gig, now you're at 750, 128 gig, you're at 778, which isn't bad. There's a lot of coupons you can find for AliExpress. So we'll go back, this one's $684. And then he's only got three displays, which so that one is the 14.5. Switch to the 64. So that one's 778. So let's see, let's open that link. 773, 128. So then you'll see this one here actually says sync one. And then you have one that's sync two and sync three. So this person here is only selling the 14.4 in the 128 gigabyte version. And you'll notice you're gonna choose three options. If you have sync one, sync two, sync three. So this is actually the place I purchased from, but I believe they have a couple different ads. So this one's 773. I'm not even seeing it, but here was the ad that I originally purchased from. I'll put it in the description. Sometimes AliExpress, these ads don't last that long. So this is the exact ad that I purchased from. $686, 14.4, Android 11, and that was for the 128 gigabyte CarPlay. And then as you can see, like here's a couple of coupons you can use. Um, when you click on these, so I used this coupon code here, and you might get a couple different ones, but there's always coupon codes on AliExpress. So that's what you guys need to do to purchase it from AliExpress. It's a pretty safe site, I think, for the most part, and you are going to save three to four hundred dollars at least by purchasing it from there. And they're actually drop shipping it. So when I purchased this display, they drop shipped it from New York, even though the person I'm dealing with, I think, is overseas. Five day shipping on the same display, and you save yourself money. Um, it's kind of a no-brainer, but let's get out to the garage. Let's rip apart my dash and then we're gonna swap over the other components that you have to put onto this display here. The truck is a little on the filthy side. We got some snow here in Iowa yesterday. So what we're gonna do is we just need to start ripping apart the center console and we're gonna start right up here at the speaker. I've got a few different little pry tools 
And these tools here were just purchased off Amazon. They're very cheap for a kit. And you're just gonna go through poor car. And so for this first part, I have the B&O speaker system. This is gonna work for the Sony as well. Um, but you're just gonna go, go through and pop these tabs loose. So now that we have this removed, there's just four little spots that you're trying to just pop out and break free from it using your pry tool. Now the next step is gonna be pulling off a seven millimeter here and here. And then after the seven millimeters are pulled out, then there's more clips up here and we're gonna pry those out. First, we're gonna go ahead and take off these seven mils up top. So now that these two seven millimeters up top are removed, we're gonna leave the speaker in and then there's some clips up here that we need to pop out. Just take your time with it. So now that we have these three clips popped out, there's still just the plug for the speaker that's plugged in. We don't actually have to unplug it. You can if you want and then just get the tray completely out of your way. But for now, we're just gonna throw it off to the side. And then we have two more seven millimeters right here that we need to remove. So now we have all the screws removed that we need to and we're just gonna, there's clips along this thing. Let's go ahead and just start prying this from the top here. Just kinda, you gotta use a little force but kinda be gentle at the same time. And there we go, it popped. Take your time with it. Once you get that popped, the rest of it kind of pops and then just use your tool along the line to uh, pop it more down low. But once you get this upper part popped, the rest of it comes off pretty easy actually. Almost by hand. So now we just need to unplug the connectors on the back side. You know, there's a connector here, here, here. It's basically all the connections that's, you know, making everything work. What I'm gonna do, since I have the carbon fiber shifter, I don't want it to get scratched up because we're gonna bring this kind of over it so I can see a little better and start unplugging everything. Once you get those three unplugged, then it kind of lets you get this further away yet. This is broke free. There are three plugs that go up top for these buttons here. And then on the back side here, you have a plug here, plug here. These upper plugs, I don't know if it's easy for you guys to see this or not, but to unplug it, there's like a little piece right there that you just push in and then pull the connector out but we're going to try to keep these in order now that that's out of the way we need to pull this guy out and another six screws which are going to be seven millimeters as well and So now we have the rest of the screws out for the display. Let's pull this guy out. And we're gonna go ahead, try to flip her so you guys can see it. So now this is the last step is just to unplug everything back here, which is gonna be your cables that make sync communicate with your display, your GPS. So for this one with this little plastic piece right here, you're gonna wanna push this button in and pull this that way. So you're almost gonna wanna try to two-hand it so push that down and as you're pushing down flip that up and then bam comes out you push this piece in pull out so once you pull those three off you're free this right here is connecting your sync module to the display of the board now we'll start taking this apart and we're gonna swap this over to our new 14 inch display so that way we have our sync okay so now we have the factory center console from the truck removed and we're gonna take the board out of this and we're gonna put it onto here. And then we also have the factory display which has the SYNC 3 module here on the back. And we're gonna also put this onto the new display as well. Now for this, we're gonna take this here. We're gonna take these three plugs out which is just your factory buttons here. You just take each on each side, just push in and then just kind of push out. And we won't install them yet. So now those are set off to the side. We're not gonna install the three buttons yet. Um, and now we just need to pull off these orange tabs. Just use both your fingers. And they'll pry right off. And I put a towel down because we don't wanna scratch up anything. I don't wanna scratch up the desk and I don't wanna scratch up the display. So now what you'll do is you'll just go through, pop all of these little tabs on. 
So those are swapped over. Let's go ahead and flip this up. The next step you're gonna do, T10 Torx, and you're gonna remove all of these screws to take this plastic piece off so we can get to the motherboard and transfer it over to the new display. Now let's take these two boards off. So we wanna take these boards and transfer them over here. And again, it's gonna be a T10 Torx. And you'll notice this screw here is shorter than the original ones from the plastic cover. So let's just keep those separate. Now once you lift this off, this piece might stick onto here, but these are the buttons for your factory radio controls. You just leave this on the factory center console piece. And then this piece here on the smaller board, this is gonna be the button that you're gonna to wanna to remove. We're not gonna use that one anymore. Just throw it, keep it with that. But for right now, let's just put this over here. So now that we got the circuit boards out of the way, we need to transfer these buttons, which are gonna be your climate control buttons onto this display. But you can see I don't have a spot for them. And that's because it came with two different pieces. This is gonna be the one if you have the manual climate control and my Raptor has the automatic, which has that extra set of buttons down here. So there are four screws that need to go in to attach this, one, two, three, four, and there's four spots. Down here, it actually just kind of slides in like so, and we're just gonna attach it on and screw it on real quick. Let's take these climate control buttons out. Literally, they just pop right out. And they go in the same order. This is gonna be for your light. Put that in. Pop that in. Take that out. Same thing with the buttons. Just push it out. And just put it right back into here. So now we got our climate control all set up. And we're going to take our circuit board. And... So once you get it in place, it's got little slots for it to actually go into. Now everything's lined up. And remember when we took everything apart, when we took the circuit board out, we used these screws, which were just a little shorter than the ones that attached the plastic cover on. So let's go ahead and get this screwed in. So let's grab our T10 Torx and button this up. What I like to do also too is before tightening all of these down, I like to leave it so they're just a little loose. So then that way, if I have any issues with alignment as well, tightening down these screws. Now let's align this board. So now it's just a little loose. We've got them all in. Let's just go ahead and snug it. Now that this board is all attached, we use the screws from over here. Since this now sits flush directly against the screen, we're gonna use, there's two bags of screws. There's two bags of screws that this new display comes with. Just use the ones that are just a little longer of the two. And we're gonna go ahead and start from this corner up here. And again, I like to just get it close and then leave it snug so then that way I can just maneuver it around. Just snug them. Don't go crazy tight. You don't want to actually break the board. So now that we got both boards secured, they're in place, just check your buttons real quick. Make sure they're working. Grab the cover. This is the new one. The old one's not going to work, obviously, because we eliminated some buttons but just set it on like so and just work from the top bottom and the screws that you use for the circuit board the black ones that it came with i'm going to use those two up top and so we're just using the four screws the black screws the longer ones that it came with to use this for the cover we're not going to use the ones that we pulled from the factory cover as those are longer screws so now we have the cover reattached and now we're going to take these other we need three clips. One there. And then we will take this. We are done with this guy. So you're gonna have one left over. Let's get it out of the way. 
So now we're going to take this screen, which has the Sync 3 module from the factory. We're going to put it on over here. And to remove the Sync 3 module, there are just three Phillips screws. So now that that's detached, and we're just going to go ahead and remove this cable because we no longer need it off of here. So this is your Sync 3 module. Let's just put this over here. And actually, if you want, just keep that all together. So now what we'll do is we remove three screws from the factory display. We're going to use this hole and this hole to line this up. So you're not going to use all three. And then I just snug it so then that way I can keep it loose. So now that old cable, it's just a short one. It obviously doesn't work. So you're going to want to take the cable that looks like this. One with the blue end, one with like the yellow end, khaki, whatever you want to call it. And you're going to want to just plug it in right here. You can't plug it in incorrectly. So once you plug it in, it snaps, and it only plugs in one way. I know these don't match up, but this is the correct one. So just snap it in and just kind of get it out of the way for right now. Just try to keep it right there. And now we are ready to start the install back into the truck. So now before we go ahead and actually put the screen in, we're going to run a few cables that it comes with. This one right here is going to be the GPS one, and it's just a double-sided adhesive. We're just going to actually, you can stick it anywhere up here. Um, just try to go anywhere that's flat. There's a flat piece here in the back in the center. Just go ahead and attach this GPS to that. Once you do that, just take it, and you're just going to want to have your GPS wires right here. Now we're going to take the USB cables. We're going to run it up through here to drop this. So there's a piece right here, you just kind of push that first and get it loose. And then you can just drop this down and hope everything in your glove compartment doesn't fall. And then we're just going to run this up this channel. And then we are going to do the same. This is your SIM card reader if you want to add some sort of data to it so just do the same thing we're going to snake one of our cellular data antennas we're going to do one one on this side one over there but we're just bringing them back up to our center thing. and just to show you guys i'm going to put this antenna it's just a double-sided adhe adhesive I'm gonna stick it behind the glove box, just right on the side of this piece. It's a complete flat piece and I can get it good. It'll stick on it pretty good. So I think we're gonna just run with it over here. And then what I did was I just left these. I didn't, I'm not putting no holes or nothing like that. They're just right there and it shuts just fine. So now we need to go ahead. We already have one antenna ran, we have the USBs ran, and then we have the SIM card over there. And now we need to run this other antenna to the left side of the truck so let's figure out a spot for it i just took my pry tool pop this out and we are going to run the other antenna through here and get it over to the center console and just for a reference inside this chase there's a plastic piece right here i'm going to just kind of put it around here and just push it on so you can see it's right there just on the side so we have all cables ran. We have the two USBs hooked up. We have the SIM card over there. We have our 4G LTE spread out. So we took this adapter harness. We just plugged in this module to it. And then we're gonna go ahead and make these other connections. Snap that in. This is just our adapter harness to go from the factory to the new. And now we can go ahead and get the display and start to install it. So we're gonna go ahead. We'll take the auxiliary cable, stick it in. It's gonna go in this middle upper one. Clicks in like so. We aren't gonna be using any of these anyway. Obviously the two gold ones, that's gonna be our 4G LTE antennas. The blue one is gonna be for our SIM card. So we've got the auxiliary in. Let's get our radio harness plug. So I have pretty much almost everything plugged in. Try to plug in everything with the longest cord first. And there's a couple things that I still got to plug in. 
Um, but this is the adapter harness that goes from your old radio to the new one, and then it plugs into your SYNC 3 module. Up here, this is going to be your aftermarket GPS. Over here is your factory GPS. Up here are going to be some of the miscellaneous. One of them is going to be like your auxiliary cable, your USB input that you ran over to the glove box. I still have yet to plug in the SIM card reader, which is going to go here. It's just, it's not that long of a cord, so I'm going to have to plug it in when it's closer to the dash. So at this point, I have, this is going to be the factory GPS cable right here, and it's going to just plug into the SYNC 3 module down in the lower left corner. And then I just need to put in the SIM card reader, which goes right here up in that slot. So really, the last things we have besides just um, the couple plugs down here from our factory harness and then our buttons up top, we're pretty much completed at this point. Everything is now plugged in. We're gonna go ahead, put these switches in. We're not gonna actually pop them in. Before we get it all actually popped in, in place, we're gonna make sure everything's working. I now have everything plugged in, so let's, uh, let's see what we got. This is the factory boot up. This is just your home buttons. If you're familiar with Android, you're gonna kinda of understand this system quick. If you're familiar with iPhones, it's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve, but I think at one point, everybody had an Android device at one point in their life. One of the first things we're gonna do is, since all the buttons are functioning, the camera button's working. It wasn't working at first, and we'll cycle through them. What you have to do is you need to go down here, and you need to go to settings. And then from here, you're gonna to wanna to go over to system, factory settings type in this code 7890 hit okay and the one you want to change don't mess with nothing else in here but reversing video format it, it came factory on cvbs you actually want it to be on the vga signal and then you'll just hit save and then you'll be done your camera should be working if you have any more issues from there i would unplug the cables and then plug them back in just to reseed them to see what that does for you guys to make sure our sync 3 module is working we're going to open up all of our apps since i don't have a shortcut right here and your sync 3 is now going to actually be under this app called console and there you go there's all of my presets for sirius xm climate phone it looks exactly the same how it was when i had the old display in here so Sync 3 is all correct. So you can come through here, hit Bluetooth Stereo, add your device, but that's only going to work for for the Sync 3. It's not going to work for the uh, wireless CarPlay that you want to use. You can use Android Auto or CarPlay. So what we're going to do is come down here. And the first thing I tried, I tried going to Car Auto. And it's going to tell you, please connect to Bluetooth, GT6, blah, blah, blah. And I looked on my phone when I had this up, and I, it never popped up as GT6, never could find it. So what I did was I hit the home button, come down here, and you're going to want to go up to Bluetooth phone. Then you'll come up here to this little link icon, pair new device. I've already got my iPhone in here, as you can see. So we're going to hit the home button. And now we are, right now, this is how it's connecting to the wireless CarPlay. And there we go. Got your maps. Hit this little button down here, and then this is going to show you your CarPlay. When you're hooked up to wireless CarPlay, obviously if you used it before, it's um, it looks like your iPhone. And then we'll go ahead and check our climate controls. As you can see, that button's working. That's working. Seat warmers only actually work if the truck is turned on. I just tried it, and they worked. So everything is, is currently working. So now I'm going to actually, this just snaps kind of right back into place. Perfect. And then we're just going to put in the two screws right up top here. The other thing that you guys are going to want to have is maybe a paper clip or this is for the SIM card trays for phones. There's a reset button right here. You just push that in, click it, and that'll reboot this because just like any sort of tablet, iPhone, Android device, you might need to possibly reboot this thing just due to some sort of issue. So I'd recommend having something so you can just click that. So maybe you're having some sort of software issue, a glitch, or you just need to reset it. You must have something so you can click that button. So now for the customization of it. The one thing that I couldn't get to change was the wallpaper. And now see how it comes up wallpapers? I didn't have that before. What you need to do is you need to get logged into the Play Store. So you're going to want to swipe down. And then this is your Wi-Fi. I just click and hold it because then it brings up your options for it. 
and you're going to see that I am connected to my local internet here. And then you're going to want to go to Play Store, and I just searched Gallery, and then you just need to download a Gallery app is the deal. Once you do that, now you have a Gallery. So a lot of guys are worried about the Raptor splash screen. They love that when you first start the truck up and the Raptor screen comes up. So what I did was I basically created one that looks kind of similar. It's a honeycomb design. And you can change your uh, startup screen on this. And then we'll come down here and we will do set as wallpaper. And then you might think it's set, but you actually have to hit this set wallpaper. So now you can see that wallpaper is set. I really like this one. And maybe say your icons, depending on the way you set up your home screen, maybe there's some icons like right here or they're kind of blocked in this. So what you'll do is you'll come back to gallery. And when you hit come back here, hit set as wallpaper, adjust this. So say I bring it down here, mid screen set. So now you're going to see that that is now down there. So it really just depends on where your icons are. And here's one of the other ones I have set as wallpaper set. And we are good. So now, and I'll probably, I'm going to adjust that down because I don't like where that's at. If you want to actually change your boot up screen, you're going to want to come down. You're going to want to go to settings and then user boot logo. And say, for instance, we want to do that guy. Setting boot logo success. We'll hit the home button. And just to show you guys what it looks like, we'll just hit the little reset button. Just click it once. And there we have it. There's our new boot up screen. If you look down in the description of this video, I'll have a link where you can actually purchase these wallpapers. So guys, that's all I got for this video. The installation was pretty easy. Just take your time doing it. If I wasn't shooting a video on it, I probably would have done this in under two hours. But I also kind of have a tech background to where swapping over the boards, things like that, is just kind of in my arsenal. But if you have questions, problems, anything, like you're having issues with your Bluetooth, your camera, stuff like that, hit me up in the comments. I'll make sure to get back to you and make sure you guys get it figured out. We'll make a video here in the next couple weeks on the general use, customization, what I think, the pros, the cons, things of that nature. Yeah, that is all I got for today. And uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if it helped you. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace.